I think uh, we'll get started. I think this is on. Okay, welcome everybody. This is a talk about occupational therapy. If you're all in the right place. Um, we're going to kind of cover two main elements in the talk today. First about kind of OT itself as a career and as a profession. And then we'll look more specifically at the Bachelor of Science degree programme here in Trinity College Dublin. Um, well, I'll, I'll leave a few minutes to, to, at the end if you have any, any questions about what I discussed. Or we have a stand over in Loose Hall where we were there all day. So if you think of anything later on before you leave, head on over there. So I suppose firstly just occupational therapists as a profession facilitate a diverse range of people to learn new or better ways of achieving satisfaction in day-to-day -day living through involvement in meaningful activity or occupation. So uh, if you're to pursue a career in occupational therapy, it's will offer you a lifetime of possibilities that are first of all hugely rewarding. I think I suppose a lot of people feel that by working hard they're rewarded not just financially but in other ways. With OT you're constantly working with other people I suppose knowing you can make a difference and a change in someone's life is hugely rewarding for many people. I suppose if we look at the example here of this, in this picture, the, it's an OT working with a young girl with a physical disability. The girl could have problems, say, performing tasks, even with the most basic things that maybe me or you might take for granted, like feeding yourself or drinking from a cup without spilling or just coordinating your hands the way maybe a child of her age generally would. So the OT first needs to get a handle on the problems, so we do kind of for someone like the child like this, an OT would look at the child and complete assessments to see what is wrong or why she might be having the difficulties that she's having. The OT then will try to find solutions, like finding maybe an easy way of eating or giving her equipment to help, like a different type of fork or a cup with an easier grip. And also you teach the child new ways of doing things that maybe make their day-to-day -day living that little bit easier. I suppose another big, big part of an OT's career is that it's hugely challenging. This, I suppose, could be seen positively or negatively depending on the type of person that you are. Challenges are a big part of everyday life for an OT. Um, through my years in college, I'm a recent graduate, um, I've learned many things about how to practice as an OT. And through practice placements, which is, takes up a lot of the course, um, I, where I've worked with several OTs, I've become very familiar with kind of typical problems and presentations of clients that I've met in my time. But many times we do face very more complex problems. Um, these need more analysis and consideration than the standard kind of approach. Um, take, for example, the boy in the picture. Um, the OT may need to assess him and provide a very specific kind of wheelchair, this is a power chair here, to meet his needs. Kind of we'd assess his seating posture and some line with the best form of cushion or easier brakes on his wheelchair, which can make a huge difference to his ability to get around in the chair, his tolerance, tolerance for sitting comfortably, and his quality of life, because that chair is his leg, so it's kind of finding the best way and most efficient way for him to get around. Um, life as an OT, as a career, it's very diverse, um, which is a, a very positive component of the course and, and job. Um, it's one of the most diverse careers that you can have. I suppose because people are so diverse and their social situations and their home environments, their work environments, they, everyone's life is so unique that you meet, you're constantly meeting different people and no two people are their problems are the same, which brings back the kind of challenging phone that there's no standard way to work as an OT, but that's very rewarding and challenging. And sometimes people need a different approach, so in that way the OT is never a monotonous job when you consider the different factors. In this picture, I'll just kind of look at the one on the left with the lady and the man. That would be a big part of OT's activity and analysis, which is looking at a person performing a task. Say, the example here would be lifting. So say this lady could be having problems completing tasks in her, in her workplace. So we might go into a workplace and see her work and then look at, oh, well, maybe she's having difficulties with her strength. And then you might do a program to build up her endurance and strength. And say in the top picture with the lady at the cooker, a big part of OT is home assessments and also kitchen assessments. So you're looking at maybe the environment where the person is working and maybe ways to make just their daily living that bit easier. And maybe giving, I think that's, is that a perching? That's a stool there today. So if someone is finding they're getting very fatigued during day-to-day -day tasks, you look at ways to put measures in place to make tasks easier to complete and to improve their quality of life. And then the bottom picture here we have, it's an interview. So a big part of OT is communicating with your clients and your patients and identifying with them what the problems are and I suppose a lot of it would be assessments and interviews and that would be used as a way of completing your interventions. So what does an occupation therapist do? We've kind of done a, a quick kind of overview of the career, maybe the positive aspects, but on a day-to-day -day basis an OT enables people 
to do the things in life that are important to them regardless of their physical or mental ability or environmental circumstances. So these ex activities that OTs would address could be work or school related, self-care related or leisure related. So uh, an often area would, an oft a common area where OTs work is with school children. Say, for example, who has handwriting difficulties. There, there would be lots of different things to do with kids, but this would just be one example. So say for this example here, most of us would take handwriting for granted. For some children, though, it could be a struggle, perhaps of problems with hand function, poor print grip, or uncoordination of the body. And the OT can help the child by first watching the child write. So you kind of give a, a formal or informal assessment, depending, and you come up with a solution. So then you might look at different techniques for writing, a different way of holding the pencil, or even a different kind of pencil with built up grips. So that kind of would be like a kind of one of the things that you might do with a kid. And then you'd work with the family, the school teachers, any kind of important adults, and with the child themselves, that they can, they can function to their highest ability in school or wherever the environment you're working with them. Um, hand function, as we all know, is very important in our daily lives. So a lot of OTs would work in, hand, in hands, a lot of special, a lot of specialised OTs working with hands in terms of hand function and splinting in different areas like that. So I suppose if you think of all things that we do with our hands, when our hands fail to work properly or caused by an accident or even from birth that we have problems with our hands, this can affect us in our work activities, our sports, our hobbies, our everyday self-care. So I suppose just for yourself, maybe to imagine if suddenly you become an injury and then you're using your non-dominant hand all the time, I suppose that faces huge challenge. It might seem like a small thing, but when you're working with a client, it's, it's huge. So I suppose the OT would assess the person's hand function. You could use grip power, range of movement, pain, swelling, fatigue, and how these affect a person's function. Often we make splints. So we splint, it's kind of, it's a piece of material that can help hand function to either encourage movement or to incorporate rest into your daily activities. We also, OT often suggest, people may say for this example here, you might be to limit their hand use to only activities that are meaningful. So say a person's arms getting fatigued, you might identify in their daily, daily schedule which kind of things are priority, what are the priority to the person where they want to use their energy. And then over time, the OT monitors change and looks at the improvement and measures that with assessments. Um, I suppose just a few more examples, they were just kind of a few, there are quite specific cases the OT is very broad, so that's just three examples. And just a few more examples of what an OT might do. Um, a big area, and it's a very up and coming area in OT, is used, using advanced technology, which is constantly changing with constant change of technology. So the example here, to enable a young man to live independently after spinal cord injury. So for example, after, I suppose after something like a spinal cord injury, everything changes, including your home environment. I suppose what you might be able to access for, bathrooms, kitchens, everything's changed. You're now at a lower level in the chair and also your functional ability, everything's different. So if, there, if someone is paralysed and needs to use a wheelchair, you'd look at maybe designing the house from when they return home from hospital and if they have very little hand function, um, you ought to, you'd look at ways to put things in place to make life easier and also to ensure rooms are wide enough to let the wheelchair around the house. And also discussing maybe discuss with architects, with other team members, about looking at the most successful design. So that kind of, there's huge work in assistive technology. Another example would be assisting an ageing couple to care for one another. So I suppose with push towards people moving into homes, a lot of couples would like to stay home. So as an OT, you're kind of trying to make this a reality and make this happen. So um, you, if the couple's having difficulty with memory or with falls or whatever the issues were, um, you would need to improve kind of safety features in the home maybe, like example would maybe a second stair railing or even to consider maybe moving a bedroom downstairs or to ensure the gas cooker has an automatic knockoff feature. They're all small things but it can mean a couple can stay at home as opposed to going into hospital or into um, a nursing home. Um, there's huge opportunities to travel in OT, so you could, a lot of OTs would travel to developing countries or war regions to set up kind of rehabilitation programmes. In the past, and still now, many Irish OTs have gone to work all over the world. And there are many exciting opportunities, particularly in kind of areas where there's less OT service or maybe none at all, and to provide kind of for the needs of local communities, but also in kind of a more developed level. There's jobs all over the world for OTs, and it is a world-recognised degree. Um, working with people with disabilities to modify their home environments, it was kind of discussed to improve their safety. These are just more examples of what OTs might do. Um, change the way people perform activities they value so they continue to do so sometimes an activity is very difficult you might change to make the big bit easier so someone can still complete what they, the task they want to do um, assess the driving ability of someone following a stroke so I suppose maybe they're 
there's lots of different things affected by stroke, so you're looking at how to see if they're still able to drive and if they are, are they safe on the roads. Um, a big part would be to visit workplaces, that kind of be a vocational assessment, a vocational rehab, to assist people to modify their jobs and design better work environments to suit their needs. And then another thing that a lot of OTs would do would be kind of around research and kind of the health effects of participation in meaningful occupations. Um, another thing that an OT would, uh, would be a big factor of an OT's job would be to assist someone to become more independent in their home, well really in all aspects of life, but for here particularly in their home. Um, so for example, you might try out various aids and equipment. For example, here she's using different ways of using her arm, but also different equipment to make the, the activity involve less energy and be easier for the lady. And in the bathroom, I suppose, which is an area of high falls risk, often working with an elderly population, you come across this. So I would be looking at maybe sort of even changing the whole bathroom if it had to be to a shower, or even putting handrails in, maybe non-slip mat, things that you'd work with the client to decide which is the safest way of the, the person working in their home environment and to become as independent as possible. Um, listening to and working with an older adult to improve their quality of life, but in general, listening is a huge part of an OT's role and such an important skill that you develop a lot during your years in college. Um, OTs really try to be client-centred, which means working towards what the client's own goals are. I suppose it's important that we're not putting our own value system and imposing this upon a person. Only the, the client really determines the quality of life that they want, and as an OT we listen to them, we take that into account, and then we facilitate what they want to do with their life. Um, so it's important, I suppose, that we stop and listen, and then we're guided by the client. And also, it's really important that this builds a kind of a meaningful relationship with you and the client, which is a component that I really like about OT, that you really do develop that rapport and you have the time to do it. And I suppose in terms of in mental health services, this is great because if someone is not feeling well and has trust issues or the report, that can be so fundamental to your treatment. Um, with kids, uh, improving the play and movement skills of a child with a disability. I suppose when we look to things like, say, for an adult, cooking, going to work, self-care, also important, but a child's primary activity is play. So as OTs, we, when we're working with kids, that's kind of the main thing we use. We use play as the form of rehab, and I suppose that a kid, maybe due to physical disability, may not be engaged in play, whether they're restricted by the toys themselves, or they're restricted by the environment that they're playing, or maybe other kids. So we kind of use play as a way of helping them to, we, use, we adapt play so they can fully engage. And the social interaction that the, the play allows can be missed out, so we're making sure that they're still having the social interaction, which is so crucial to ch child development. And here, just the OT is facilitating children to play a board game, which will encourage fun, which also the kids will want to engage. But also you are encouraging movement, interaction, and you're also challenging the child. So you're, it's very, you're really doing a lot in such a small activity. So it was an OT that you're constantly considering how, how what you're doing is affecting the child. Um, here's just an example in mental health, for example, someone might use drama or relaxation um, to improve someone's mental health and also by developing self-management skills. Um, OT actually originally started in mental health, but it would just be kind of one area of it now. Um, as, I suppose a lot of people working here because the challenges and opportunities to make a difference are great in mental health. Just in terms of drama or relaxation, relaxation is quite common in terms of someone's very stressed or having a lot of mental health problems, that can be a form just to bring them back in and to gain focus. But a big part of mental health and OT would be giving someone their own self-management skills. First of all, maybe to recognise when they're becoming unwell mentally or to maybe take more control of their own health and kind of giving them the skills to, if maybe if they have coping difficulties, they're, they're, very, they're very high anxiety, you're giving them, you might give them anxiety management kind of training on how to to kind of reduce anxiety and when you are faced with anxiety, what to do. Kind of simple things might seem like, but it's, it, it gives people the quality of life that they might want. And also like in a lot of OTs do group works and particularly in mental health. So you could do things like re relaxation or you can do kind of, people do, might do drama or you, you, you talk with the client what they're interested in and use that activity to help them to develop these self-management skills so that whether it's in hospital or community, they'll be able to cope better with their problems. Um, OTs work in several different areas and kind of the primary ones I suppose in Ireland mainly as well would be in hospitals or voluntary services, in rehabilitation units, in schools, in community health centres and then people's homes. Um, wherever you are at work as an OT, 
um, you're generally it's very it's very rare you'd work on your own, which is nice. You're constantly you're often part of a team, which is nice that you've got feedback from the people and you're working collaboratively to work towards the client's end goal. So you'd often very very often you work with social workers um, and physiotherapists, more so maybe in physical rehabilitation, and often you'd work collaboratively with them. Um, actually, you'd, often you do joint sessions, speech and language therapists, um, nurses, psychologists, doctors, teachers in kind of a school setting, looking at the child's goals, and then architects in terms of like looking at, sometimes you look at as big as community design to make community in general more accessible, but then on a personal level, looking at um, the house, house design of people maybe following an injury or an accident. So I suppose if you're considering a career in OT or completing this course, I suppose you need to think of what type of person you need to be. I suppose kind of general characteristics that are associated with occupational therapists are that social person, to be compassionate, to be patient, to be analytical and to be quite creative. It, it involves a lot of creative thinking and, and thinking on your feet as well. I, I'd highly recommend if you are considering this course that you contact an OT, even look at the directory inquiries or wherever, or on, on the HSE website. Even either, if you, could, if you could shadow them, that would be pretty. That would probably be better and to get a feel for what the job is, or even just to have a chat about what they do and whether this kind, the kind of work would appeal to you. So, in terms of salary scale, um, starting as a basic grade, it starts at thirty-three thousand six nine hundred sixty-nine, and ranges up to forty-five thousand. After three years, then you can then go on to a senior post. Um, and that would range from 50,000 to 59. And then if you choose, you can go for an occupational therapist manager job, which is kind of more the organization of services and you're more organizing OTs as opposed to working with people. Um, I suppose then in terms of, that's kind of more the HSE, fund, that's more in the health service that you'd be getting that money. But internationally, many OTs enjoy very healthy incomes because pay scales do vary between countries. In the, particularly in the private sector, um, and they've also moved into areas where the salaries can be much higher, in management, administration, or consultative positions. So I suppose if the initial salary didn't appeal to you, there is opportunities to go higher in private work, but that is the, the basic starting point in the public sector. So I suppose looking at the degree programme here in Trinity, it's a four-year degree course. There's between 40 to 45 point places that ranges from year to year. Um, last year, I think first round offers were 5.15 and last round offer, which is random selection, went down to 5.10. I know there was a bit of a jump last year. Uh, one science subject is required with the C or higher. Typically, 10% of places go to mature students and that doesn't come through the CEO system. That comes through kind of an interview process and that, once again, that ranges. Uh, classes are based in the Trinity Centre for Health Science on St. James's, is right beside the hospital and also on campus. Um, the basic sciences, you know, some subjects that you'd uh, be studying, basic science kind of psychology, anatomy, physiology, they're kind of the first two years and kind of conditions in medicine, paediatrics, orthopaedic psychiatry, kind of learning about the people that you're going to meet in the course and then the theory and practice of OT, the art and science of occupation itself. Um, a big bit would be research met methods and statistics, so you're actually looking at different parts of practice of OT and then researching it to see if it's effective or to improve practice. Social policy is kind of the underlying of you know, where funding would come from, where people are entitled to OT. And then I suppose the last one is actually, it's probably the biggest area in terms of time-wise, clinical skills and practice education. You complete 1,000 hours of placement, which is spread over the four years. I think it comes to 33 weeks altogether which is quite a lot, so you're on pace now, which is, if you're kind of a hands-on person, I think that would really appeal to you, because you gain a lot of, you, you're working with people, real life people, and it's great experience. So I suppose that's kind of the main things really in the course and in the career itself, kind of they're the four areas that OT cover, play, leisure, self-care and work. So that's kind of an overview of the course and the career itself, and if anyone has any questions, and if I don't get to answer any questions now, we're over loose hall for the rest of the day. So that's, that's, the, that's it.